The mode we're going to talk about here is pressure support ventilation, also known as CPAP with pressure support. A lot of people just call it spontaneous mode of ventilation. I like that term quite a bit because it's very descriptive of what this mode is. This is for spontaneously breathing patients only. If your patient does not breathe on their own, they do not need to be in this mode. This is used upstairs quite a bit for weaning. Uh, we don't use it as much in the emergency department. However, it is still a mode that you've got to be familiar with. So when you look at the vent, there's two basic things, three basic things rather, that you're going to set in pressure support ventilation. First of all, you're going to set your PEEP. We'll go ahead and set our PEEP to 5 for our patient. Again, that's just your baseline pressure. Uh, you're going to set your FiO2 to maintain your saturation of 90%. As you go up on FiO2, go up on your PEEP. I have an entire video just dedicated to oxygenation that I would encourage you to review. And then you're going to set your pressure support. So your pressure support, we'll go ahead and dial that in as 5. It's just a supporting pressure for spontaneous breaths. So you can see on the vent here, as our patient initiates a breath, the pressure comes up to 10, and then as he stops breathing, it drops down to five. So with pressure support, the vent will sense that our patient has started to take a deep breath in and come up to this higher pressure. And then the vent will sense when his inspiratory flow has slowed down, and when inspiratory flow has slowed down, that means he's about done with his vent, it'll drop back down to that pressure of five. Our patient determines his own tidal volume, he determines the only length of his respirations, and he determines his own respiratory rate. So as you can see on the vent here, uh, Dr. Atherton, what I want you to do is take a slow, big, long, deep breath. And go ahead and breathe that out. So you can see here, this breath was quite long. And you can see this tidal volume was quite high. He had almost a four liter tidal volume. And Dr. Atherton, I want you to take a very short, very shallow breath. You can see that, ventila that ventilation was very short and that tidal volume was very low. Again, our patient controls everything about the respirations. Jeff, I don't want you to breathe at all. I want you to just hold your breath for a minute on exhalation. If the patient does not breathe, no breath will be given. He will not get a breath. Now the vent has a fail safe in place to keep you from killing your patient, which is good. We don't want to kill our patients. So it kicks into an apnea mode ventilation and you can see now, our ventilator is actually giving him breaths to prevent him from dying. If you ever see this on the top of your ventilator, apnea ventilation, you are not in the mode you think you are. You are in the backup fail safe mode. So if you ever see apnea ventilation on your vent, you're not actually in these settings that are down here. To get back to this mode, you actually have to reset the alarm and then we'll go back to CPAP with pressure support. So as a final review, in pressure support ventilation or in CPAP with pressure support, you set three major things. You set a PEEP, you set an FiO2, and you set a pressure support. PEEP and FiO2 are the major determinants of oxygenation. We have an entire video dedicated to oxygenation I would encourage you to review. All we'll reinforce here is start with the lowest possible FiO2 to oxygenate your patient, and as you go up on FiO2, go up on PEEP according to a PEEP table. Finally, pressure support. This is a supporting pressure to support spontaneous breaths. As you increase pressure support, you may increase spontaneous tidal volumes, but again, everything the patient is doing is spontaneous. This has been a review of CPAP with pressure support in about five minutes.